Hey guys, Lieutenant Dan here with an update on the new version of BBR 3.0. As most of you know, who are in the know, know that uh, Sired has come out with changes to the BBR map, and I wanted to incorporate those into my version. And of course, while I was adding changes, I thought, hey, why not add a few more additions? So I'm going to go over all these things with you. Hopefully this will be a quick video. If not, I don't know what to say. All right, so here we go. Let's go over the changes first. So the first one was uh, he added Bessarabia to have an IPC value of one. And then he took that value away from Russia from what is now called even squeaky. So this used to be a one, now it's a zero. So that was one change. The next change he added was a new territory and some uh, slight changes to uh, how troops can move around. So one is is that he added this Casablanca, Morocco uh, territory. And you can see here that it terminates right here at the uh, sea zone here to prevent the Allies coming in as, as a last uh, turn effort and dumping a bunch of guys here to, or let's say on Morocco, because Morocco used to be here, um, to um, take away that uh, victory point the new Rome victory point. but um, And so he put that here, but he also added this back door to the south of the Sahara Desert to get to the French West Africa side of the map. So those were incorporated. So those were really the only two changes that he made, um, along with a bunch of, uh, you know, changes to the rules themselves, but these were the map changes. All right, so like I said, um, while I was uh, making changes to this, I thought, hey, you know what? I might as well add some more changes uh, per some items that popped up while I was playing games with my son um, just to help clarify things such as victory points, national objectives, uh, setting up the game, uh, things like that. So let's start with the easier things we'll just do uh like a setup so for example you see like this anchor for a naval base in gibraltar so i went ahead and you know wherever there were call outs for like a major factory versus a minor factory i have different icons for that you can also see uh air base icons um i thought i'd do something kind of neat where i would take planes from the country I get the silhouettes and I made a uh, little uh, clip art images of them and I placed them here so this was uh, some Italian fighter versus if I go to um, let's take go to the U.S. side of the map um, I went and grabbed um, a U.S. plane okay now sometimes um, you know I want to have the option to play uh, the out of the box the G40 game and so if, for example, you know, as an example, this air base is added if you played the BBR rules. Um, same with, uh, like, um, come over here for Nova Scotia. So, you know, I wanted to have uh, an easy way to identify, okay, is this for BBR or is this for uh, a G40? And then I think there's only other one other case, like in France, uh, you know, depending on which year you play, um, you know, 40 has a major, but then, you know, after one turn, it turns into basically a minor. Uh, so if you start it with the 42, um, you know, to uh, place a minor there. So that, I put those indicators there. So I thought that was kind of neat. Um, here's, you know, uh, um, a French fighter versus a... Um, one of the Luftwaffe fighters versus a, um, a Russian fighter, as an example. All right. 
So that was uh, kind of nice. That way it just makes it a lot easier to do setup. Yeah, I know that information's on the setup cards, but I thought it just added some nice little visuals to the map. Um, and also just makes it easier just for, uh, you know, having to, you know, figure out, okay, you know, looking at that, uh, that grid on the, on the, uh, setup card, not that it's that hard, but you know, just a little, anything extra to help out is, uh, worth it in my book. All right. So then, um, I went ahead and added another sea battle. Um, for those who have been following me along, uh, you know, I have a sea battle of, uh, the Pearl Harbor attack. So you can see all the uh, information I put um, when Japan attacked uh, the U.S. And uh, then I had, I, I put in, um, you can barely see it here, I put uh, the um, the Toronto raid here, um, I think on the last version, and as well as the, uh, the Battle of the Bismarck. So the whole... Um, information here, but you know, what was always, uh, kind of empty on the map was, uh, something over here in the Indian ocean. So I did find something that, uh, this was the Indian ocean raid, um, as well as the Easter Sunday raid. And so it was a big, it was a huge, uh, um, attack. It was actually, um, it didn't go as planned. Well, it could have, it could have been better for the Japanese. I mean, they could have uh, really decimated um, more than what they already did. But nonetheless, they had two divisions of uh, carriers um, that uh, took off from the Celebes. Um, so I captured that here. Um, and then um, I also uh, went off, uh, gave the, the path when they were spotted, um, they launched uh, attacks uh, on the, this was the, this attack here was the Colombo Raid, Colombo Raid. And then uh, here's the attack on the two heavy cruisers that were kind of sent out uh, t to try and intercept uh, the, uh, the division, uh, the divisions of uh, the Japanese carriers. And then, um, so you can see that didn't go so well. They uh, lost those cruisers. And then the uh, Japanese kind of did a uh, loop around. They uh, went this way. They did a, a big number here. But anyway, they launched another attack uh, when um, the UK launched uh, a couple uh, ships, uh, a light aircraft carrier, the Hermes, and that got sunk along with a destroyer. Um, and that's about that. So I thought, you know, it came out nice, gives a little extra visual on the map. Um, just something to, uh, gaze at while you're, uh, playing the game. All right. So, uh, from there, let's see, what else did I do? Uh, I, I figured out a way to add, uh, I don't know. I was just kind of playing around one day with Photoshop and <clears throat> I was trying to understand how to do, um, uh, texturing and things like that, but um, if you kind of zoom out, I'm going to zoom out to how it would look um, on the map if, it, if it's printed out. I, I kind of put in some texturing to give it a little 3D texturing um, to the uh, to the territories. Um, <clears throat> so here's like a Sumatra, you know, it gives a little kind of um, bumpiness, whether it was a, a rocky terrain like mountains or jungle or things like that, but um, kind of put that in there. I guess where it's uh, more prominent is like in India, you can see uh, uh, some uh, rockiness happening there, more mountainous, right? I, I, I used Google Earth as a, a way to kind of find out where uh, this terrain would be placed on the map. So you can see some here in Afghanistan, um, I really started out first in uh, Saudi Arabia um, and it branched out into Northern Africa. Anyway, I thought, I thought it would be something nice. Uh, I'm hoping, I haven't printed it out yet, but hoping it will uh, print out nice uh, just to give a little bit more details to the map. All right. All right, so then from there, 
I want, as I was playing a couple games with my son, we were always having to refer to the, uh, to the victory points. So, uh, you know, which territories were part of the new Rome or which islands are part of the Pacific Island uh, point. And so we're always having to, you know, go to the map and reading off the card. And it was just, it became kind of uh, a, a pain point, if you will. Um, you know, I'm not that uh, ad- that versed to the game as uh, a lot of people are. So uh, I thought this would be helpful for those who are new to the game. So let's uh, let me show you this uh, legend that I created, <clears throat> um, which is just for the the victory points. So um, as you know, there's 30 victory points that uh, can be <clears throat> uh, achieved by the different sides. And uh, here they are. And so basically, you know, you got the Atlantic wall. I, I What I try to do is I try to get uh, uh, images or icons that uh, were representative to that victory point. So like uh, New Rome was uh, very Italy-based, uh, uh, if you will. Uh, same with the Horn of Af- Africa. So those, uh, those icons that you can see here, you know, you know, looking around on images uh, like a Mussolini's hats or medals or badges that uh, people would wear, they would always have these eagles. Um, for the Atlantic Wall, I got this uh, bunker or pillbox. Uh, Mediterranean uh, again was the like a bunker or a pillbox. The Imperial Point. Um, this is actually from what the what the uh, what was the the emperor would wear. He had like a, a medal or a I don't know, I think it was like a metal or something like that, but it was a flower, and it had some other decorations around it, but I, I just got the flower, so I thought that was kind of neat. <clears throat> and then, uh, like, the Third Reich. So, you know, just visually you could see, okay, yeah, that's the South Asia, South Asia point, um, and then you need five of these or 70 IPCs for the Third Reich or, uh, you know, four of the four icons for the Atlantic Wall or you know, Pacific Islands, four of the 12 islands. So let's, uh, let's do that. Let's, uh, go to the, maybe go to, oh, well, we'll, we'll cover the, uh, I guess since I'm on this side of the map, I'll, I'll start with like, uh, the new Rome. So you can see that icon, the, the eagle shows up. So you can very easily, um, you know, see that, oh, okay, I need to have all of these territories where that uh, big eagle shows up, uh, to claim the new room point. Um, if I need the uh, the med point, you can see that little pentagon bunker shape. You know, it may not be too obvious. I didn't want things to necessarily always to pop right out. You know, I didn't want it to overtake the map. Um, you know, the map, as you know, it is quite busy, uh, but I think the busy- busyness kind of adds to the... Uh, to the genre, right, that I'm kind of looking for. You know, a map is typically busy, but uh, I felt that these images and icons kind of blended in really nice with the with the theme. Um, all right, so let's see uh, what else. Uh, oh, here's the, uh, the Atlantic Wall. So you got to have Normandy, Holland, Belgium, Denmark, and Norway. All right, uh, let's see if I kind of go to, um, let's go to the other side of the map. I'm not going to go over every one of these, but uh, I think I'll cover a lot of them here. So here's like the southeast. That was always one at the very beginning. It's like, okay, which territories are the southeast? I mean, now, after I create this information on the map, now I know, right? But but you can look at that icon real quick and go, okay, yeah, I got to have these five territories to get to have that point. Um, if you go, one that always got me was the, the Pacific Island point. So I have this, um, this rising sun icon and I thought that blended in well with the map because, you know, when you're on an island, you think of, uh, you know, rising sun, um, as well as that's, uh, the axis, uh, obviously Japan has their flag, but, uh, anyway, so you can look around and see, okay, you got to have all the, um, territories that have that that icon in it 
All right, so that is that on the victory points for the most part, right? Um, now, the next thing that I thought was a huge add um, to the game, I'm hoping it will be for the gameplay, um, is the national objectives. Um, you know, <clears throat> having that national objective information on the cards uh, that you can print out is extremely helpful. Um, but uh, what what I've been pondering on for a good year, year and a half, was something that I saw by Moffitt Field. He printed out, uh, back on his uh, first version of the BBR map, he had these little uh, different um, national objective icons. They're like circles with, I don't know, some flames around them or something. But nonetheless, he... He put some verbiage around there to indicate uh, like a one-time payment or something like that. Um, but I don't know if he really put all of them in there. And they seem to be kind of uh, kind of generic, if you will. And uh, so, I, you know, I thought that was a great ad, but I wanted to put something that was uh, had a lot more information to it that I could just capture in one icon Um and that would capture uh, the details on the card, right? It's not really to replace the details on the card, but it's really a visual cue, right? Um, once you understand these visual cues, you know, you, you may not need those cards anymore, uh, per se, right? You, know, you you may not have to go to them as, as much anymore, I should say. All right, so let's, uh, let's start off with, I guess we'll just do it here while I'm here. So I have a really... Uh, two shapes. Uh, one was a, a hexagon uh, that you see here, and then I have a circle. So I'm going to go over the hexagon. Um, so with the hexagon, I have uh, visual information that I have captured. One is the color. Um, so I, I'm putting the color of the nation, uh, the roundel. Like for example, if it's Japan, it's going to be red with white versus... Um, if it's Italy, um, sorry, UK, it's going to be this yellow with black. Um, the this blue with white. That's the Commonwealth, and so on. So visually, you should be able to look at the map and go, okay, yeah, that's a German, that's Russian, that's Japan. So you'd be able to know right away. The other is is that I put this numbering scheme in here. So a five indicates the total number of uh, IPCs or or not IPCs uh, dollars that you can. Uh, achieve if you, for example, uh, get this, um, this territory. But you'll also, in, you'll also see that in this example, this has a four next to it, which means that, okay, for you to get those $5, you need to get the other icons that have a four next to it. So, um, so if you know this uh, particular uh, national objective. It's basically uh, grabbing the the money islands. So Japan has to get uh, Sumatra, Java, Borneo, and Celebes. So you can see that four there in the five. So you know that hey, if I have uh, units in those four islands, I get that I get the five bucks. All right, that's one example. Um, if I switch, uh, go to let's let's take the UK. So they will get $5 if they get Malaya as well as Quang Tung. So it's kind of nice that it kind of played out that uh, there won't be um, any other hexagons that are yellow, five, and a two. There's only two of them. Um, same holds true with uh, Japan. You know, there won't be a, a five and a four. Um, if I go to, um, well, you see like this five and 11, that's the one for, uh, the Commonwealth or Anzac where they got to have essentially 11 territories and then they get 11, uh, or they get $5, but there's 11, um, indicated on that hex and the, the extra one that's, that's always like, okay, they got to have, what is it? Oh, it's Malaya. So you can see, you know, they got to have this territory, Malaya in addition to all the other ones that they control. All right. All right. So now if I kind of go to, um, we'll look at the, let's, let's say the Solomon Islands. 
So uh, here's an example of, uh, you know, the five and a four, right? Or the five and 11. So sometimes it's a combination, right? Um, anyway, so you can get multiple dollars. Um, but, but, you know, if Japan has, right, this territory, you can see it's a, this is a one time. They don't have to have other territories. This is that uh, one where they, if they control multiple islands. It's a, they get three bucks per territory that they control. And so you can see it's just a hexagon with the $3. So that means, you know, every turn, if they control, they get three bucks. And so that happens in a lot of the islands that are scattered out throughout the Pacific. Here's an example of that. Um, here is uh, like the, uh, the U.S. has to have uh, five islands. So they get $5 if they get five. Um, these that have, you know, the red, white, and blue Anyway, so I thought it was uh, kind of nice, uh, you know, I was always having to, you know, go to the card and it's like, okay, which islands? Oh, it's Hawaiian, Johnston, Line, and so on. So now I can just very easily uh, know that, okay, do I have those uh, five territories that have that that shape and that, that numbering scheme uh, on there? All right, so then the other uh, uh, thing that I did with, as it uh, relates to national objectives, uh, one that uh, was actually a, a rule change was this, um, if the Soviets, so you can see the color changes. So this one's only specific to Russia. Uh, they get $5, a one-time payment, uh, one entity, meaning a, you know, one entity makes up this circle. So they get uh, five, five bucks, uh, a one-time payment for liberating Manchuria. And there was uh, another uh, thing for like um, like Japan. If they capture Calcutta, they get a one-time uh, payment of 10, but they get a every turn uh, that they own Calcutta, they get five bucks. So you can see that uh, that captures two national objective cards. All right, so... Um, there's China for if the uh, the Burma roads open, they get six bucks. And um, here you can see uh, Germany is black and white. Um, Italy is uh, white and black. Here's the uh, here's that one national objective. You know, if there's no sea vessels or let's say warships, I think it is inside of these. Uh, territories but you got to have eight of them and then there was i think there's one condition for germany um <clears throat> so i indicated uh with the this yellow I, I forgot to indicate that on the uh there was japan had one for french indochina but uh how i do that is if there's like a there's like a if condition for example there's a national objective that states that as long as germany controls norway and Denmark, they get $5, but they cannot control uh, Sweden. And there might be another part of that uh, clause, but basically I, I could capture that visually with this, uh, with the three indicator, right? Okay, so it's basically, okay, five, I, if I control these two, as long as I don't control this, that's why I put that little yellow border around the, that, uh, that hex. Anyway, like I said, it's not to, uh, totally get rid of the cars, but it, you know, after you understand the rules, then you won't have to go to the cars as much, right? All right. I think that is about it. So, um, oh, awesome. I kept this under 25 minutes. That's not good. So sorry about that. But, uh, anyway, I hope everybody's doing great. Um, and, um, I am looking forward to seeing some of you in the, the BBR, uh, game that's, uh, going to happen at the end of September or October. Anyway, I'm signed up for it, but I wanted to get this, uh, map printed out so that I can start playing, uh, so that I don't end up being last. All right. So until then, everybody take care.